dining table. Um, what I've done is I've got some 12 mil structural ply from Bunnings, and then we've bought some 12 mil by 90 mil Tasmanian oak strips, and we've cut them down to size or roughly to size. Class is a hardwood, but not the hardest of them all. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is glue them all on, then we get these timbers across, clamp it, and then we'll probably squish it overnight, let it dry, and then flip it upside down, and then we'll use some bullet head nails and really get that nice and tight. <laughs> and then once it's done, we'll cut it to the exact size we want. We'll put some 30 mil by 12 mil border around it, and then we'll stain it, and then we'll put like a two-part clear coat on it, or something like that to, to seal it, and then that'll be it. We used PVA glue to bond between the Tasmanian oak and ply, and also put a thin bead between the Tasmanian oak strips. We put a few nails on the edge of the first piece, where we knew it would be an offcut, so we had something to push the rest of the strips against. We then put two bar clamps in to squish the Tasmanian oak together and minimise any gaps. After that, we ran two old bits of timber over the top and clamped them down with G-clamps to stop any Tasmanian oak popping up. So we've just um, glued all the strips, clamped it, now we've flipped it over and we'll start getting the nails in. So this is my dad, hi dad. <laughs> <laughs> Before we glued the oak on, we pre-marked the timber centres to make this stage easier. So we've nailed everything underneath now. We've clamped it down here and here to hold it down and then these two clamps have really squished it together. So we'll let that dry overnight. Um, and then we'll cut it to size. We'll put our border all around, sand it flush, stain it, and then we'll clear coat over the top. The glue has set and it's feeling super sturdy. First thing I did was use filler to fix any gaps in the top and then sand it back roughly prior to cutting it to size. We are now getting ready to install the 30 by 19 Tasmanian oak edging by firstly cutting the pieces to size and on 45s to connect the edges.
We did the edging wider than the actual table to give the illusion the table is thicker without making it too heavy for the lagoon arm. Now that all the edging is cut, it's time to fix them in. We used PVA glue and nails to increase strength. I pre-drove the nails into the edging, so once they were in place and glued, it made a lot easier to fix. Make sure you try not to get glue on your timber, because then the stain won't stick. If we had any glue come into contact with our timber, we wiped it off straight away and sanded it back as soon as possible. So I've finished filling this top this morning, so I'll just sand it back tonight and then stain this one so that's all done. All the nail holes have been filled in. We're trying to decide between these two as a stain. I think this one's a bit too ashy and this one's a bit dark. So we've made this one, it's kind of an in-between of this one here, this one shade lighter. So I think we're going to go with that one. Um, and this is the stain on the off cut of the table, but that's with an extra coat, so we'll go one shade lighter. This is our splashback, and we'll be doing black grout, all the cupboard doors, door fronts, and then this for the overhead door and the wardrobes. So this is the final product, our dining table. We didn't film the clear coat, but we did two coats with a spray gun. We made the table strong because it's also going to be a part of our bed base. You kidding? <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally thought that went through. That was so mean. Just putting on the lagoon table mount. Beautiful. Testing it out. <laughs> Enjoying it? Thanks for watching. Next time we'll be building and installing our herringbone bench tops. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.